Welcome back. Today we're starting a new sculpture. This sculpture was a suggestion from Kevin in England, one of my subscribers, which is really cool to know there's people actually watching. So I'm using water clay and I haven't been doing a lot of water clay sort of work because I've been doing a lot of oil-based plasticine stuff, including the Battlefield 5 character that's taking way too long. So I wanted to see if I could just whip this up as quickly as I could. So I always start out with a base and I'm using grog clay and that's the, really the best one possible for firing. But at this point I'm not really sure what I'll do with the sculpture afterwards because now that I have a 3D printer I could potentially just print this out of plastic and eventually I'll be doing some more videos on how to do it. So on here, you can see where the Hulk's uh, feet are going to be. This is going to be the Incredible Hulk. It's going to be a older style Hulk, not the recent version of Hulk. So maybe like a 1950s sculpture uh, of uh, the old Hulk. So we'll see how it turns out. I think... If a sculptor looks at this, they might think I'm completely inept at sculpting because normally you don't start out doing these little chicken legs as you sculpt up. But with water clay, I kind of need that as a support because I build it from the, the ground up. Now at this point, I had a bright idea of putting a steel tube. It's a plumbing tube and I'm going to just stick that horizontal pipe into the back of the Hulk. That's going to give me some support and it's not going to have as much weight on the actual body. But at this point I am just building up the legs really thin because I want to be able to just build up kind of like a stick figure. Once I get the stick figure and the pose I should be able to start adding in the anatomy. One of my favorite tools to use are these sticks. They're basically food sticks. You can get them anywhere in every grocery store. But I add them in because I need some sort of support as I add the clay. You could do it without it, but it's going to be so flimsy. And remember, we're not building a steel armature in the inside. In oil-based plasticine, it's much easier to get like this really dynamic pose using a frame, an armature. But at this point, the sticks are essentially the skeleton. They're just kind of holding things together. And eventually, I will remove them for firing. But even if you left them in, they would just be burned out. You would need a way of um, getting the air out, but they would just completely burn. So it looks kind of ridiculous. The more I look at this, it looks like a very amateur type of sculpture. So at this point I'm adding a support to hold up the clay. This is a thing that's going to happen is that the clay is going to seep down and every day that you're working on it it's completely going to just drop a little bit at a time. So fast forward it a little bit you can start to see the basic pose of what I want. One of the things I did I left this dry overnight because I needed it to be a little bit firmer. The, the structure had to be firmer so I could add clay on top with more detail. Hulk, when you look at Hulk, his head is very small for his body and that emphasizes all the muscles. His upper body is extremely large and it's much easier to do a comic book human body than it is a human body because the human body has much more subtlety than a comic book. So if you exaggerate things, and I tend to exaggerate things, so it it's something that is a little bit easier, I found. But you know, often I don't do a lot of comic book things. I would like to do a few more, but I probably will do them in plasticine. And I might do another pose of Hulk in plasticine but in a very different pose so stay tuned for that so at this point you can see I'm sculpting in the deltoid the bicep 
and one of the things you're going to be finding is that the Hulk comic book E is so powerful, so thick up on the top. When you use water clay, things tend to drop. Things are extremely heavy up top. So that's why I needed the structure to hold them up. And his feet are extremely wide. They're, you know, abnormally large for, for the body. But that gives them that beast sort of look. That S curve going down the spine, I have to emphasize that a little bit. One of the problems with water clay is that once the clay kind of firms up, it's hard to move around. So with an armature and oil clay, you can move it around infinitely without any damage. But this, you have to kind of see what you're doing and then eventually commit to it and don't make too many modifications. So I can still move the arms around. And at this point, you can see I twisted the torso around and I added clay in the appropriate area to make it look like he's twisting his upper torso more. His arms and his hands are absolutely massive. And that's one of the issues I'm having with water clay is that when you add so much weight in a extremity, the hand is going to start drying out, but also it could potentially just break off. Not only break off just a hand or the arm, like the shoulder could potentially fall off. So I need to figure out a way to support it while I work on it while it's still wet. Also, I need suggestions on what you guys think his hand should be doing. I could have him in a fist, but I could also have him like in the clenched way that he tends to do, like the, uh, the anger that he feels. And another thing I could potentially do is that I might add, you know, instead of having the support that I have of him propping up, he could potentially just be on a rock because often you use these props to hold up these figures because the terracotta is kind of fragile in the beginning. So the hand looks kind of puny, but his forearms are going to get massive. But at this point, you're starting to see a little bit of detail. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the hair. I just want to mass it in and see how it looks like depending on the year of the hulk he has a different haircut but this version is a it's a little bit of an older version and he's got like a, a cut like the guy from dumb and dumber lloyd christmas it's like a bowl haircut which looks kind of goofy but it, it goes with the hulk idea Another great tool to use are these cloths that you would get at, at an auto parts store. They're shop towels. I love using these things and I'll use them for like years, but it's better just to buy like in bulk. They're great for like wiping grease when you're like changing the oil in your car, but they almost mimic the burlap of the old master sculptors. So my back here looks very plain, but eventually I'll add a little bit more detail. I need a little bit more reference for the rear of them, but you're starting to see the mass of the Hulk at this point. And this is going to be the phase one of the Hulk sculpture. And eventually I will add a few more details and finish it up. It's been uh, taking forever because another thing that happened is that I broke my camera. So I've been waiting around. So here we go. That's the first session. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.